The following podcast is a Dear Media production. Not that Drake and Josh is of, of the Twilight status, but sometimes I'm like, do we really have to talk? Do you mind talking a little about that? Not at all. Okay, thank you. But Great. Drake, and jo- <laughs> Drake and Josh or Twilight? <laughs> First fun story, because I can't help but make this all about me. I remember, it's like 2006, seven. they're like, audition for this movie, Twilight. It's based on a book. It's, it's going to be great. And I, oh, wow. I send in my tape. <laughs> for who? Edward. <laughs> wow. A month later. Did I know this? I get a, uh, <laughs> I, I'm with my manager. He goes, it's down to you and three guys. You're close. I'm like, <laughs> really? I hadn't even had a tummy tuck yet. I'm like, there's no way. <laughs> He's got to be so shirtless. It's not going to happen. Crap. Spoiler alert. Didn't get it. Um, but I remember, wow. and then seeing our Pats playing this part, I'm like, in what fucking world were they like, they're like, okay, here's what we're we thinking, go. Chris Hemsworth or Stanley Tucci, like, what the fuck? Impossible. Impossible. Dude, that's amazing. Yeah, so we almost worked together. Oh, um, I did not know that. Oh my God, that's Holy so crap. Funny. My big question is because you went, you, I think we had the same acting coach as a kid, Andrew McGarrian. Yes. And I remember, and tell me if this is true, what, what he said was, and he was always giving you, I'm not just saying this, he was always giving you so much credit because he was like, between the first and the second Twilight in the books, your character makes this kind of a bit of a transformation physically. Were the, was there talks before? Because you in the original movie, you were like lean and thin and, and not the... Yeah, I mean, I was, yeah. The Adonis. 16-year-old boy. <laughs> right, natural, normal. Yeah. And were, was, were there talks that maybe you weren't going to play Jacob in the second movie because you just didn't quite physically fit that part yet? There, there wasn't before um, the first time I had heard of that was shortly after the first movie came out. Um, but I knew that if the first movie did well, they were going to want to start filming the second movie um, pretty shortly after, like at the beginning of the new year. And I've read the books, so I know where my character goes. So thankfully, long before the first movie came out, I started my transformation journey. Um, but the studio was unaware of that. So right after the movie came out, it did very well. They decided we're green light in the second movie. I got a phone call from my agents and my managers saying, hey, um, you know, tough news, but the studio just called us and they let us know that they uh, thank you for your participation in the first movie, but they're going to be moving on and recasting for the second movie. For the same part? Yeah. I kind of saw it coming, but what the studio didn't know is I'd been, like I started my journey probably nine months before that phone call. Mm. So my team was just like, okay, you know, I hear you. Have you, um, have you seen Taylor recently? And they were like, no. And they were just like, okay, well, you may want to take a meeting with them. And they were like, okay. So I took a meeting with them. They were sure surprised. Um, at that point, at that point, everything stayed on. Um, I put on, at that point, like 20, 25 pounds of muscle, maybe 20 at that point. Um, and then they were surprised, but they didn't stop their search for other people. They like kept talking to me as they were doing auditions with you know 10 10 year older guys than me um how did you feel i i understood um i understood why because there's no way i could have played jacob in the second movie and on looking like i did in the first movie so i understood that but as soon as they saw the amount of work that i had been putting in for the last nine months um at that point i was like come on guys like what are we doing here um so then i I had to i had to start the audition process completely over again wow i had to meet with the studio i had to meet with the director they made me read again read again with Kristen. or actually they wanted me to read again with a casting director and i called Kristen up and i was like could you do me a favor would you would you read opposite me for this and she said absolutely so she fought for you yeah there definitely, there definitely was a meeting where they were like, "All right, take it off." <laughs> wow, for real. Yeah. 
Yeah, I remember being in the parking lot before that meeting because like they said that they like needed to see it. And I remember being in the parking lot. I brought some like dumbbells and just like pumping up before I walked in the room. I like walked in with a little like tank top. Well, oh. it's good to know everything's equal in show business. <laughs> I was going to say, did that happen to you at Nickelodeon as well? <laughs> <laughs> but like, could you imagine like in... I, I don't think you could, certainly you couldn't do that with a female, but like, like in any version of that, right? But like, could you do that with a guy today, like 15 years later? I don't think so. Probably not, huh? I don't think so. I don't think you could, yeah, I don't think a studio, I don't think you would be in a boardroom of a studio having like 15 executives and on one side of the table, <laughs> you on the other side of the table and them being like, all right, take it off. Let's see it. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, well, that's on. Like, well, it's in. Book does say. Did you have to do any posing? Were they like sick lats? Like, what did they? No, no. But I did like one of the scenes that they made me screen test with Kristen for was a scene where I took my shirt off. So they did get to see it then too. Um, but that was a literal. That was a little earlier on in the process. Um, because I ended up by the time by the time we started filming and this this journey went right down to like a couple weeks before they started filming. Um, I didn't know that I like re got the role until like within a month from filming. Um, but yeah, I ended up putting 35 pounds on um, in total. But uh, how did you do that? Because I was so young, I was 17. Um the trick was like no cardio. I wish that I could, you know, do this today. But like if I would, it was just heavy weightlifting sessions. Obviously eating was the most important thing. Like when I was filming, I would have my trainer with me and he would wake me up at like 5 a.m. and feed me a six, 700 calorie protein shake. I would down the protein shake and go back to bed for two hours before I had to wake up for the day because it was if I had less than 5,000 calories a day, then I would start dropping in weight. Like it wasn't natural for my body to be at the weight and muscle mass that I was at. That was like us pre Ozempic. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Claudia's like, wake up, wake up, Biggie. <laughs> Take a bite. <laughs> you got to maintain your weight. Oh my God, 5,000 calories. It's so funny just the way that people process food differently. Like if I had that, like I would be on my 600 pound life and I'd be proud. I mean, oh. if I did that now, it would be a different story. But at 17, I was just like burning yeah. so much. Bef like at the beginning of my journey, my trainer, like right when I started working out, he, I would literally do a workout and he would say, go over to Carl's Jr. and get a freaking triple, you know, cheeseburger and a chocolate shake. Like we just need to put something on your body first. Wow. Then we can transform it into muscle. But wow. Sounds amazing. Yeah. So you get the part and you're walking back on set for the second movie for the part you already got once. Yeah. Are you a little resentful? I don't know if resentful is the word, but I definitely was like ready to prove myself and ready to stick it to him like mm. i'm like you know i want to knock this out of the park so much that you question why you ever questioned me and so nobody told you directly that you needed to gain that weight you just had read the books saw the writing on the wall team planned like what a great team it was to be completely honest it was it was my father who led the charge he he was the one who sat me down and he said Bud, you know where your character goes. And if you wait until after the movie comes out to start that journey, it's going to be too late. When you do these kind of movies, I know like the first one, you know, you don't know if it's going to be massive. Everyone usually gets paid kind of the minimum, right? And not to get too much into specifics, but is it between like the second and third? Like when do you guys do like, because I love that, the big renegotiate, <laughs> renegotiate. <laughs> when was that moment? Studios did, they learned from their mistakes from the Twilight franchise. Shortly after the Twilight franchise, they learned that we have to just sign people to five, six picture deal right off the you bat. You guys were only signed to one? To start, yeah. 
and 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 then after that was like another one or two and then they were like oh there's a fourth book that just came out and we want to split the fourth book so it's going to be two movies we were very thankful for that that's nice excellent we want to split the fourth one you're like yeah i want to split my home into two homes yeah <laughs> so 